It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, happens to be our chief investment officer and my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on another kind of cloudy, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, autumn, fall weekend, but... uh, Man, oh man, Bob, it is like living in London these days. Well, you know, Ra, I think it's uh, it's almost like Seattle or London. Of course, they're having really bright, sunny days now, so maybe the maybe the world's shifted. I'm not sure, but I think it's time to transfer the flag down to Florida, and I, I need to go uh, check out the offices in Florida and see how everybody's doing down there. You know, Bob, you always have your eye on the prize. You know, wherever there is a sunny weather, a pool or beach in front of you, uh, you've got it wired. I don't know how you do it, but uh, I'm envious. I'll let you know. <laughs> I need the playbook. <laughs> well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about fixed income. Bob and I are going to discuss the basics on bonds. The bond market took a big hit this last week. We're going to talk about how you need to own bonds, how to use bonds to integrate safety income into your portfolio. We're going to talk about taxes and retirement. Are you paying too much in taxes? Bob and I are going to discuss some of the potential tweaks you can make to your portfolio to make it more tax efficient in retirement. Along with this week's financial propaganda, there was a lot of crazy things going on in the market this week. So hence, there was a lot of crazy financial news. Bob and I are going to call it the biggest offenders are propagating bad financial news you need to avoid. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning. We have Aaron Dessen. He's a financial advisor at our firm. This is his debut doing the Spotlight segment. He's going to talk about a real retirement case he worked on and just talk about some of the things that he did to help a couple get retirement ready so you can do the same. So let's hop to it. we got a great show here. Bob, it was a crazy week in the bond market last week. Interest rates went up. Bond prices went down. Uh, We had like Panamanium, more in the news than maybe in the markets. I mean, they sold off, but it wasn't as crazy as as the media made it out to be. But what I find is a lot of us don't really understand how bonds work and how owning the right type of bonds in your portfolio is critical to do it right. So, you know, just to start things off, Bob, you know, what the heck is a bond? You know, Rye, that's a great question because it's very simple. A bond is a loan. Right? It's uh, money that you lend to an institution or an individual. They pay you interest on the loan. And then when the loan is due, they pay you back. Now, I've taught you since you were born that there are certain people and institutions you don't lend to, You know, like your brother-in-law. <laughs> um, uh, you don't lend to your brother-in-law because, number one, the goal of making a loan is to get some interest and get your money back. And when you lend to a family member or a brother-in-law, you don't get either. <laughs> That is good advice, right? I think the equivalent in the financial world will be a junk bond, right? When you lend to maybe a borrower that's not necessarily uh, has the best financials or has the best ability to pay you back, right? So we would- well, it's even worse than a junk bond. But let me ask you, right? Who's the safest institution you can lend money to? In other words, who's guaranteed? And you know that's a word that's thrown around in our industry by annuity salesmen and stockbrokers. There's only one investment that's guaranteed, and that's a loan to who? That's the good old U.S. government, Bob, a good old-fashioned treasury bond. Yeah, well, how are they able to guarantee the loan? If they, last I read, they're deeply in debt. How's the U.S. government guaranteed? <laughs> they have one strategic advantage that we don't have. They can print more money. <laughs> they got the printing press. You know, If they have too much debt and they need more money, let's just print more. It's a great so they strategy. they have the money, they can print it. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Well, at least you get your money back, right? You got the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. But it doesn't matter if you lend money to a, a federal government, you know, you got to pay tax on the interest. Of course, it's exempt on a state level. You lend money to a city or a state, it's totally tax free, right? So are, are municipal bonds safe? I mean, for the most part, depending on which ones you actually buy, right? That's the thing. You know, people can say, oh, I don't like a type of bond because it's risky. I don't like municipal bonds because they're risky. Well, the reality of it is there's, you know, thousands of municipalities across America and they're not created equal. You know, lending to, A municipality in New York City is a little bit different than some small town in, let's say, uh, North Carolina, for instance. Okay, so I want to understand this. If you have a uh, portfolio of stocks, which are very volatile, as you saw this week, 
and you want to have a safe part of your portfolio, what could be more simple than making a loan to a high quality institution where you get interest every six months and then when the bond comes due, right, you get your money back. How did Wall Street manage to screw this up? <laughs> well, let's face it, Wall Street's very good at screwing a lot of things up. <laughs> let's be fair. If they didn't screw it up, it really wouldn't be Wall Street. But so no, they the- create these uh, dreaded investments that we call bond funds. Is that for the investor's benefit or is it for Wall Street to line their pockets once again? I know it's shocking, Bob, but it's typically for Wall Street's benefit. And, and that, the problem is, and you might have noticed this this last week, interest rates went up significantly last week. And when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And the problem is, if you're in a bond fund, and you might be in a bond fund right now because you're trying to add some safety into your portfolio, is bond funds don't come due, right? We said a bond is a loan. And the idea of a loan is you have a, a payment of your loan down the line. You don't have that luxury with a bond fund. And you know what happens, Bob, is you end up seeing the price go down and you don't necessarily have a day that says, I have price protection on this portfolio. And that's a real problem. Well, that's what cracks me up. They call it fixed income, right? Nothing's fixed. The coupon, the interest that you get is not fixed. The maturity date's not fixed. And, and then just to make more fees for themselves, they go out and they sell these leveraged investments. We had a doctor come in with his pension fund a couple of weeks ago. Thank goodness. I just looked at some of the closed end funds that we liquidated and they're down 15% year to date, right? 15%. In a that's bond crazy. Investment. Right. Yeah. That's the whole idea. You're owning bonds for safety. So presumably not going to go down 15% in value because that's like a stock market investment. So you're telling me, Bob, I could own a bond fund and I could see the same volatility of stocks, but I'm not going to get the same great returns that stocks have over time. That's a bad deal. Well, that's why I call them hedge you lose, tails you lose investments, right? You get all the downside risk of the stock market without the inflation hedge and the ability to increase your income over time because in stocks, you know, dividends go up over time. You have an investment where you're taking all the risk of the equity market without an opportunity or a chance, you know, to get the superior returns that the stock market's given over time. So, you know what, right? So many different things, right? It's not just the, the bond fund structure. A lot of times they're in there buying these Puerto Rico bonds that were risky or they're buying Atlantic City bonds that have been downgraded. They're buying junk bonds. Now, of course, they don't call them junk, do they, Ry? They call them high yield, which sounds like something attractive and sophisticated you should invest in. But when you actually look under the hood, it's a lot of junk, Bob. <laughs> it's not really well, good quality bonds. Now, here's my rule of thumb, Ry. If you went to the bank right now and you needed to borrow money to buy a home, you wouldn't pay any more than 5%. So when someone comes to you with a bond investment where you're going to get guaranteed, supposedly, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15%. Just ask yourself a question. If I can borrow at five and I'm just a small retail investor, why does someone have to pay me 13% to get money? Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, the old saying is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And you might be thinking to yourself right now, you know, I have a lot of risky bond funds in my portfolio. Look, interest rates went up big last week. Inflation is kicking in, which means interest rates will probably continue to go up. The economy is doing really, really well. It's really important to know what you own, why you own it. So here's your shot to get that second opinion to make sure you don't own bond funds. You have the right portfolio in place. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic financial review. Simply bring in your statements, bring them off the printer. If your statements came in this month, put them in a folder, bring them in. We're going to go through all of it. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal so we can view your whole financial picture at a bird's eye view. We're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in bond funds, lots of different investment products like annuities, mutual funds. Bob and I are going to show you where the hidden costs are in your portfolio and how to reduce them. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is your income gap? What income do you need to replace? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Markets were extremely volatile this week. Is your portfolio protected? When the market has a correction, it goes down, what's your downside risk? Bob and I are going to show you how to protect your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very critical question 
Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? So all you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over $200,000 for retirement our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Now this is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we are the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Officer here at Payne Capital Management. And Hurricane Michael made landfall this week, the worst hurricane to hit the U.S. in about 50 years and caused catastrophic damage throughout the southeastern United States. Now, the stock market suffered what some pundits described also as a catastrophic drop, falling 1,300 points in just two days. Now, many pundits are pointing to the recent rise in bond yields as the culprit, since rising yields will ultimately lead to rising corporate borrowing costs and could slow the economy. And generally, when the fundamentals change, it does lead to what I call a price adjustment in stocks and in the market, or simply put, valuations adjusting to a new reality. Most investors realize that 5 to 10% corrections are common events on Wall Street, Since 1900, 5% corrections have happened on average three times a year, 10% corrections once a year, and 20% corrections once every three and a half years. None of these drops are predictable, but it doesn't stop the pundits on the financial news, who of course didn't see the pullback coming, now of course telling investors they expect the market to keep going lower. Why does anyone listen to these false profits? I could sum it up in one word. Fear, and fear sells, and fear causes people to panic. When markets drop 1,300 points in two days, even though it's almost an annual event, of course, in percentage terms, it's scary, and it makes it easier for the average investor to panic, or is it the markets have an easier time going down when investors are panicking? Either way, all I know is this. Every dip in history, and I've lived and invested in all of them over the last 45 years, are temporary, and prices always recover faster than investors realize. And of course, new highs are inevitable. So invest accordingly. And in closing, I just want to leave a message for long-term investors. A panic sell-off is a terrible thing to waste. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate for this volatile marketplace? Are my portfolio holdings appropriate for my risk tolerance, for my goals, for my dreams? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. These for us? Are these for us? Are those for us? Are these bagels for everybody? Are these for us? Grab a New York bagel, lather on some cream cheese, and keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. You know, if they're not from New York, they're not real bagels. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, as you know, are simple men, and we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a baseline to help you get started with the financial planning process. Get yourself retirement ready. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B U L L. ISH to 555-888. That's text the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Just a great baseline to get started with financial planning. Make it a little easier. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Bob, you know I love the saying, money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. Rye, I always say this, you're a wise man. No wiser words were ever spoken. (laughs) Bob, you know, you can say that again. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
but you know, I think one of the things that we find, I mean, you and I are very razor focused with our firm. It's all about financial planning is, is really looking at tax efficiency, right? You know, I always look at it from the perspective of you can get a, a big return on an investment, but if it's very tax inefficient, when you figure out your return after taxes, it, it could be a lot lower. Where conversely, you can get a lower return on a much more tax efficient investment and end up putting more money in your in your pocket after taxes because that's really the bottom line. And one thing I think is a misconception is I think a lot of people think when they retire, they're going to be in a lower tax bracket. And if they don't do the right planning, that's not necessarily true. So true, right? When it comes to just planning for retirement, whether you are retired or you're planning to retire someday, you know, m- creating a tax efficient portfolio is critical, but there's a lot of different tax strategies you can employ right now and do it every year. You know, number one, like maxing out your 401k contribution. You know, so many of you do not take full advantage of that tax deduction. Now, if you're in a 30% tax bracket, every $10,000 you put into a plan, that's 3000 in taxes that you're not paying. And now I know you're going to get it back in goods and services down the line, right? But, um, you know, what's better to save that tax today or get those goods and services someday in your 80s? Yeah, exactly. You don't want to defer that if you don't have to. And I think, Bob, that poses another problem, though. If you're getting close to retirement, if you're going to retire even earlier, you got to worry about when you're 70 and a half, we have what you call a ticking tax time bomb because all that money you put into that deferred plan or retirement plan, now the government's going to force you to take it out. And a lot of times that's going to bump you up to a higher tax bracket. And I know a strategy that you and I are using a lot now is, hey, maybe you're in your 60s right now. Maybe you are retired. And a lot of times you may be in a lower tax bracket. It might be smarter to start taking money out of your retirement plans early. And a lot of times what you can do is convert that into a tax-free vehicle for life. Now you have some tax-free income over your life and your heir's life, but also you're also going to reduce the amount of money you have to take out of your retirement plans later, which can be a tremendously beneficial strategy. And I notice a lot of times that just gets completely ignored. Yeah. You know, right. You got to coordinate it with your social security benefit that's coming in. You know, a lot of times that can push you into a higher bracket. You don't want to pay more tax than you have to. So doing a Roth conversion or, you know, taking money out of your retirement plan before, you know, the mandatory distribution at 70 and a half, you know, could be a brilliant strategy. And everybody's unique. You need to run the analysis on your situation, not follow some rule of thumb that you're going to read about, you know, online. Another thing you can really focus on, Rye, is how you take your required minimum distribution. All right. Once you hit seven yes. and a half, you know, that's the government's way of getting you to pay tax on all those retirement savings. There's a lot of different strategies you can use where you can maintain that that portfolio balance for years if you distribute that money correctly. And I'll tell you one tax saving strategy that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of right now that you want to do. You can distribute that RMD right to charity, right? That is an awesome strategy. And it's with the new tax law, it's become so much more advantageous. That's huge. If you're charitably inclined and you have to take your mandatory distributions every year, your advisor should definitely be talking about that because that's just that's money right off the top of your income that just doesn't get taxed or factored in to your taxes. Yeah, well, since we're talking about charity, another thing, since all of us are charitably inclined, you know, we tend to write checks, you know, like December 31st, uh, last minute, you're sending all your checks out to charity. It's better to gift them highly appreciated stock. I mean, we have a lot of you who come in with stocks where you don't have your cost basis. Well, you don't have to know your cost basis when you contribute some of that high performing stock to a charity and you get the tax deduction and it's a big tax savings for you and your family. The other thing too, Bob, just thinking about tax efficiency in retirement is with interest rates going up, and we talked about this earlier, interest rates had a significant move last week. And if you're in a high tax bracket, things like tax-free bonds are more attractive than ever. I mean, if you're even getting just a 3% return on a tax-free bond, if you're in a 37% tax bracket, that's like you getting almost 5% on your money with very little risk. So there's you know there's a lot of ways to create tax free income as well, and with the yields going up now, there's a lot of attractive ways to do that. If you're in a high tax bracket, even if you're in a lower tax bracket, because municipal bond yields are almost the same as treasury yields, you're getting a much better deal. But it's also always to have a tax efficient portfolio. One of the reasons why you don't like active management is because it creates unnecessary taxes every year, and when you have a market that's volatile like this. You know, you want to put some money into the lost bank. 
right? You want to take advantage yes. of declines in the market to sell what's down and swap that into something similar so that you're still in the same position with that investment, but you have that tax deduction. Every single dime matters. This is the perfect time to do that too, Bob, just because, look, the market has come down over the course of this week specifically. So now there may be losses on your portfolio that are going to go away when the market goes back up. So looking at those tax swaps right now is like awesome strategy to look at. So what you're saying, Rye, is tax-free income, tax-efficient portfolios, saving tax dollars is going to give you a positive return on your money makes a lot of sense to me. And I'll tell you, if you're thinking right now to yourself, you know, I need to be financially healthy. I need to know what I own in my portfolio is appropriate, especially in view of all this volatility. I need to know if I'm being overcharged by my own portfolio. I need to know if I'm in a position to succeed. Here's your opportunity to know. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, it's a full holistic review where we look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. Gather all your statements. We just finished a quarter. Just had your monthly statements come in. Put them in a folder. Put them in a shopping bag. You don't even have to open them. What we're going to do is we're going to review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal that allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience. We're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, true diversification, low cost, and high income. You want to be diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. You want to be certain that you're not being overcharged. I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged, and I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. We want to make sure that you have a reliable, repeatable stream of income to fill that income gap that we all have once we go into retirement. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? For over four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, you're one of the next 10 callers, take the pain challenge. Make sure you're on track at 844 752 6692. That's call or text 844 752 6692. This is no pain, no game. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the world of financial propaganda? You know, Rye, it's what I didn't find. You know, we had a big tumble in the markets this week. We had an 800 point down day, which was the 80th biggest decline since 1950. 800 points isn't what it used to be. But what I didn't find was great investment advice. Uh, I heard about people panicking. I heard about all the things that you should worry about now. Inflation, higher interest rates, the fear trade, the China trade, the trade wars. Over and over, what you find is that the market makes the news. The news doesn't make the market. So what I want to tell everybody is the article that you should read is the one that I'm going to write. And that's a panic (laughs) sell-off is a terrible thing to waste. Yes. Right. Of all those declines, you know, this is the 80th biggest decline since 1950. How many of them were permanent? 0.0%, Bob. Every correction we've ever seen in the stock market, markets have always recovered and go higher. And this year is a perfect example. I mean, we had a 10% correction at the beginning of the year on the same fear. Interest rates were rising, and then the market went on to new highs. So, you know, 
to your point, Bob, these corrections don't last that long. So it's like if you don't take advantage of it while it's here, you're going to miss the boat. Yeah, but every time there's a correction ride, the thing that comes out immediately is fear and uncertainty and the four most dangerous words in the history of investing. It's they are. different this time. Why does everybody always feel that it's never going to go back up? I mean, I think that's because fear sells, Bob. I mean, let's, that's why we do this whole segment on financial propaganda, right? Fear sells. And I mean, that's why it's so hard to be a long-term investor. Let's face it. I mean, the market has done phenomenally well over our lifetime, our parents' lifetime, their parents' lifetime. You just had to be in, but it's because we have this volatility along the way. And what only makes it worse is the financial media only makes you second guess yourself and only creates the kind of fear when, ironically, that's when you should be buying, when all the fear is is being talked about and, and emotions are running high. Well, it just blows my mind. I mean, I have financial news on all day long because you're on all the time. So I want to see you on national television. But you that's know, they have all reason. these analysts that come on and they're telling you about what to buy now, except for when the market's at a better price, they're saying, oh, you can't catch a falling knife. Uh, be careful. Hey, maybe you should take some profits here. Uh, Jim Cramer was telling people that, hey, if you still have profits, don't be afraid to take some. I mean, that's, everything's about not investing. So when I do these market corrections, you know, it's so easy for us to say, you know, don't become fearful, you know, stay the course. It's the right thing to do. You know, it's really hard when you feel the markets are so volatile. But, you know, here's my advice, Ry. Slow and steady wins the race. Let's all be winners. Yeah. No true words been spoken, Bob. I'll quote you on that later. That was so good. But I also think, you know, the other thing, this is a good reminder that your asset allocation may be too aggressive right now. If you saw the market go back this week and you saw your portfolio with outsized volatility, it might be a sign that you're probably not positioned properly. And we've seen this a lot, you know, with people that have come into our office where you might be getting close to retirement or you're in retirement now. And if your portfolio has like 80% in equities, this is why it's not a good idea to have that much money in the market when you're getting close to retirement and in retirement because no one would have predicted this week the market was going to sell off the way it did. Let's face it, all the news has been very positive, Bob. So something like this really came out of left field. And that's why you can't predict this stuff ahead of time. And you already have to have a portfolio that's set up or geared towards retirement. Yeah, it's the same message we send out every week, right? You can't predict. You have to be prepared. And hey, sure, large company growth dominated by technology has been a big winner over the last 10 years. But if you have too much of a good thing, as you found out this week, it turns into a bad thing. It's always good to be proactive in rebalancing your portfolio, making sure that you don't over-concentrate it in any one area. Now, Rob, we talked about Intel back in 2000, when you know the month before it topped, it was up 20%. But a month later, they had you know, a little negative outlook on, on their business, and the value of the company dropped in half. They yeah. lost $400 billion in one day. Well, that reminds me of Bob, because that was the second largest stock in the U.S. stock market at that time. Amazon today is the second largest stock in the U.S. stock market today. And same thing. It had a huge valuation. It was a very expensive stock, just like Intel was. And let's face it. I mean, Amazon can keep going up here. It's come down a bit in the last week. There's no reason why that stock couldn't go down by half and still be overvalued versus the market. That's very conceivable. And you have to start thinking about those things. Well, you have a stock that's selling at 155 times earnings, which means it's way overvalued. It has to grow a lot, you know, become the value that it is today. And last I checked, it doesn't pay a dividend. That's good stuff, Bob. Yeah. Well, just to change gears there for a second, now I'm depressed about Amazon. <laughs> I found an article this week, Bob. I know it's going to be hard to believe, but Wells Fargo was in the news again, and it's not good news. <sighs> Their PR firm should be fired. <laughs> it's like, if Wells Fargo doesn't have bad news, they don't have news at all. And recently, they were sued by a farm-owning family, and they were sued for a breach of their fiduciary duty in a lawsuit that alleges that a Wells Fargo advisor engaged in churning life insurance contracts, racking up over $597,000 in commissions for himself and his employer, leading to financial harm for this woman who wasn't that financially savvy. And I think this is a big deal because I've seen a lot of this lately. I've seen a lot of insurance products being sold, not bought, sold, and the broker or advisor gets a big commission. And a lot of times these 
insurance contracts, Bob, are really not appropriate for your situation. That's a problem you have with, with the wirehouse and banking industry. They're, the people that work there are called producers, right? I mean, it's like it's you're a big producer. And what are they producing? Commissions. They're not fiduciaries, which you have when in registered investment advisory firms like ours. These are salespeople. And they get their name up on the board if they produce a lot. So the culture dictates that, you know, the person who sells the most gets their name on the board and they get all the recognition. And of course, their manager or their overseer gets promoted based on the amount of production that comes out of that office. So it's really a bad strategy for a firm to have because it really does promote bad behavior. Yeah, I don't think I want, I don't think someone called a producer is my ally. <laughs> you know, no. it's like, it just sounds like they're coming at you with, uh, you know, you're a nail and they've got a hammer. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just, you know, one, one after the other there. I mean, that's, it's just such a bad connotation. And, you know, to your point, Bob, look, the world has changed a lot and the financial services world has changed dramatically over the last couple of years. And you really need to understand the person you are working with. Are they really a fiduciary? And you need to ask that question point blank. It's kind of a buzzword in the industry right now, but fiduciary means by law, you have to act in someone's best interest. Not having the opportunity to work with someone who's a fiduciary in this day and age, I have to say, is it's, it's going to be shame on you at some point. It's just the opportunity is so great now to work with somebody who can act in your best interest and you should do that. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a fiduciary. I need someone who's going to act in my best interest. I need to make sure that I have the right asset allocation in these volatile markets to make sure that I'm retirement protected. I'm retirement ready. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that we've been perfecting for over 40 years to make sure that you're on track for retirement. Simply bring in all your statements, put them in a brown paper bag, print them off the computer, whatever. Bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where you can view your whole financial life in one place, giving us a bird's eye view of what everything you're doing. We're going to look at all those critical components to what you're doing. We're going to look at fees. What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio? Do you have a lot of high cost commission type products like annuities brokerage products like mutual funds, closed-end funds. We're going to show you all those hidden costs are in your portfolio and how to reduce costs on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the market going up or down every week, as we know. Is your portfolio optimized for retirement? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap in retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio protected? If the market is volatile like it is today, what risks do you have in your portfolio? We're going to show you all the pitfalls and how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team here at Payne Capital Management will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we'd like to give you very common sense advice on a weekly basis that you can apply to your own planning investing. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a great baseline to get started with the financial planning process, make it a little less daunting. You can download that for free. Simply text that word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 
888 what you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive. Just a great baseline to get started. Financial planning process can be a little daunting. This makes it a little easier. You can simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to www.bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show there. We put up some timely articles, our thoughts about the market. Great resource online. You can check me out most weeks on all the major networks talking about the markets, giving you our latest insights and ideas about where things are going. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, Bob and I will answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And to help us answer those questions, <laughs> we ask the questions a lot. We have our producer, Mark Haywood here. Mr. Haywood, what's happened this morning, brother? Gentlemen, good to be with you as always. I'll tell you what, though, I'm about tired of these storms coming through North Carolina down in the south. I think I'm I'm ready for fall. Enough with the hurricanes. <laughs> man, you've been getting hammered this year. <laughs> oh, man, what a rough year. And the folks down in Florida still recovering. Bob, I guess you're lucky down in Naples. You're on the uh, the West Coast side, not the panhandle there. But, man, just a rough yeah, year for storms. Our friends the panhandle didn't do so well. It's uh, These storms are horrible. They're scary. Yep, yep. We wish you the best with your recovery, of course. The first question this week comes to us from Joffrey in Greenwich, Connecticut. Wow, Joffrey, living the posh life. Up there in Greenwich. He says, Bob, I've heard you talking about being aware of the risk in your portfolio. I'm 65. Exactly how much risk should I be taking? Well, Joffrey, that's a great question. And since I'm 65, I know the answer. You know, it comes down to volatility. When we think about risk, risk is about price change. Now, when we were in our 20s and 30s, we could handle a lot of risk because all dips in history are temporary and the ups are inevitable. But uh, you have to have time. You have to have patience you know, for those recoveries to occur. And when we're 65 and we're getting ready to retire, did you hear that, Rye? Getting ready to retire. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Bob. You know, we don't want right to necessarily my have that downside volatility in our portfolio that we can't really have the patience to recover because we need that money to generate income in our retirement. So, Joffrey, you know, Rye and I created a process, and this process has been implemented with our entire clientele over a 40-year period and I got to tell you, it's the only thing that works. It's called the A to B process. And Rye, how much success have you had with A to B in helping people ascertain how much risk they should have in their portfolio? You know, what's enough and what's too much? I mean, not to ham it up, but the reality is, I mean, that's there's, I don't know another way, right? That's the only way we ever design a portfolio is based on goals. I mean, without doing that, it just, it makes no sense. Like, you know, we say all the time about an investment portfolio is not a financial plan. Um, if there's no oh, correlation. Really takes out all the uncertainty, right, Rye? Right? I mean, who can predict what's going to happen next? No one, right? So if you can't yeah. predict, but you can prepare, and the A to B process is what the best way is to prepare for whatever goals you have in life. And I think the best way to do that, Bob, and we talked about that 360 portal, and I think this last week is probably a good wake-up call because you don't know what risk you have in your portfolio until the market actually goes down. And I think a good litmus test, you like to talk about going to that sleep point every night, is how did you feel last week when the market went down? And secondly, did you even know where your risk was in, in your portfolios? And with that 360 portal, that's the best way to get that bird's eye view of how all the parts are working. Because if they're not working together, they could be really working against you. And especially when the market goes down last week, it's like a painful reminder, painful, no pun intended, of you know really where you are and where you need to be. Well, that's the beauty of it, right? It tells you exactly where you are right now. It tells you where you're headed. Tells you the probabilities of success. And, you know, we've learned over our careers that risk is only something that's recognized in hindsight. And a lot of you recognize that there's more risk in your portfolio than you thought you were taking. It's not too late to fix that. And the beauty of having the 360 financial portal is it, it answers all those questions. And with all the tools that are available, it answers those questions for you whenever you feel like looking. Well, thanks for writing in, Joffrey. Let's move over now and take one more question from Vivian in Livingston, New Jersey. Ah, a social security question. We get a lot of these. She says, Ryan, I don't think my kids are expecting an inheritance from me because I was a single mom for most of their lives, but I really want to be sure that I'm not a financial burden for the amenity point. Should I work until I'm 70 so that I can take the highest possible social security benefit? 
Social security is, is a big variable in your retirement. Now, there's a lot of different things you need to think about. Maybe taking it 70 makes a lot of sense, maybe because there's longevity in your family. Maybe you're still working and you don't need the social security. That, that's one reason. Number two, maybe you want to take it earlier because if you don't take it at full retirement, which would be 66, I'm guessing in your case, you probably are going to be close to age 79, 80 before you break even taking it later. So the point is, there's no hard, fast rule for when you should take Social Security, and there's a lot of different options to do that. So what I recommend, you know, like Bob and I were just talking about, everything's got to go back to your financial plan. So when you start to factor in all those other variables, like what other incomes you have coming in, do you have longevity in your family? Do you have a younger spouse? Now, in Vivian's case, you're single, Vivian, so it's a little bit different. But the point is, there's no one way to take it. And you really have to factor in all those other variables to make what I would call an informed decision about the best way to take Social Security. Well, you know, planning's about prioritizing goals too, right? I mean, it, it's really a great thing to want to have your children inherit as much as possible. So I agree. their life struggle is less than yours. But let's face it. I mean, your retirement is most important. You know, I think the, the one statement that Vivian made is that she doesn't want to become a financial burden on her children. No, no one wants to become a burden on their children. And I think that's the highest priority, not inheritance. You know, don't let the estate plan wag the investment dog, right? You want to make sure that you have enough income to overcome inflation and all these unexpected taxes and expenses in retirement. Yeah, it's so key to have a customized income plan that optimizes your situation specifically. Hey, Ryan, I got a question for you. Joffrey and Vivian, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do you think they are? Oh, Bob, it's not pretty. I'm going two and a half today. I'm not feeling very kind. <laughs> well, I have a question for all of you. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you? Shouldn't we all be a 10? And if you'd like to be, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers and save at least 200000 for your retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. One holistic view will let you know what you own and why you own it, and not only display your net worth and your financial net worth on a daily basis, but also update your goals and how you're progressing toward those goals anytime you feel like booting up and looking at it. What we'd like you to do is take all of your statements, put it in a shopping bag, stick it in a folder, make an appointment. We're going to break down that portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy, true diversification, cost, and income. You know, without diversification, you have more risk in your portfolio than you realize. Maybe a lot of us saw that this week. Cost. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be overcharged. I don't want to pay those hidden fees. I just need somebody to dig it out and tell me where they are. And income. We can increase the amount of cash flow in your portfolio and at the same time reduce the overall risk. You know, most portfolios we review are taking more risk than necessary than it takes to achieve the goal. Why not get that in writing? And finally, we're going to create for you and your family a total financial master plan utilizing strategies that my firm has been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your point A to your financial point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Six six nine two. Here's your shot. We have a couple slots left at eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. If you have over two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement, take the pain challenge. Make sure you're on track for retirement at eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's call or text eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. 
If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word cash, that's C-A-S-H, cash, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word cash, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we try to give you common sense advice you can apply to your portfolio. That's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great way to get started with the financial planning process. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And we have a very special guest on the show making his debut. uh, Bob and I's colleague, financial advisor at our firm, Mr. Aaron Dessen. Good morning, Aaron. Thanks for being on the show this morning, my man. Good morning, Ryan. Bob, thanks for having me, guys. You definitely have a voice for radio. I like that. You have that deep, strong voice, Aaron. I've always been told I have a face for radio. So that's good. <laughs> I don't believe it. I've seen you in real life. You're a handsome man. And this is the spotlight segment where basically we talk about a real case we worked on and we just talk about some of the different mistakes or what we like to call pain points. That's spelled P A Y N E for the record that a specific retiree or couple have had with their retirement planning. And you and I actually worked on a case together about a week ago. So why don't you just give us a rundown on some of the issues that this certain couple, and we, we, we really met with the husband, he was having what he was looking for, and then how we helped him solve his problems. Sure, absolutely. So uh, like you said, we met with this really nice couple. He's 70, his wife is 69. And some of the, the big things that they were focused on were lowering fees and the overall expense in their portfolio. They earn a lot of income, so they would really want to trim down on their, their tax burden and really just focus on lowering their taxes, lowering their fees, and uh, having some kind of you know tax-sheltered plan to leave money for their heirs. Yeah, which is, I, that's very common questions to have. And then you know when you went through and you actually ran our portfolio analysis or our what I call our portfolio x-ray, you know, what did you find? Well, looking at just their investments, um, we did notice they were in a lot of high-cost mutual funds um, as well as some annuities. So that was really ramping up you know, the, the fees and overall expenses on the investment side. And as far as the fixed income portion of the portfolio, they were invested in a couple of Bob's favorite. They were in bond funds. Well, Aaron, there's a reason why I'm known as the national financial advisor against bond funds and have been for 30 years is because they don't work, right? They're not fixed. You don't have a fixed rate of return. You don't have a fixed maturity date. And for a financial advisor, financial planner like you, it's almost impossible to make wealth projections because there's no way to know or estimate what the return's going to be when you don't have a fixed rate of return on your fixed income portfolio can be a problem. That's exactly right, Bob. And that was another focus, you know, as far as lowering their tax burden. They're in such a high tax bracket. Owning, you know, a municipal bond portfolio outright is a great way to help with the tax burden. And like you said, really, you know, accurately run wealth projections and do some real planning for them. And then in I terms of the it, overall risk, were they taking more risk than necessary or not enough? You know, I, w- I would say that they were taking more risk than necessary in their investments. And really, you know, a good portion that we would focus on putting in fixed income investments was really just in in money market accounts and, and in cash, you know, which in my mind can be more risky over the long run because you, you're really not hedging against inflation. Yeah. And that was the crazy part. He had 42%, which is very common, by the way, sitting in cash right now, earning virtually no return, Aaron. Remember? I mean, it was just like, hey, you know, you need this money to grow over inflation. And right now he had almost half his net worth just sitting there. And I think part of the problem was he just didn't know which way to go because he thought like, hey, my advisor's charging me too much money, I think. I don't quite know. And was really just kind of perplexed about where the money should go. Right, exactly. And the other thing too is, which I thought was interesting, you, you made a good point, Aaron, is there's a lot around just getting some real financial planning done. A big thing for him was is a way to save money in taxes, which we all want to do. I mean, we talked about some creative strategies, especially because he has those big IRA distributions. Yeah. I mean, to your point, you know, he's earning a great income. He has these big IRA distributions that you know, quite frankly, he doesn't need and doesn't want. But it turns out talking to him, you know, he's a very generous guy, loves donating to charity. But it's kind of a no brainer. He can max out his distributions per year at $100,000 out of the IRA. 
and he can donate all of that money to name charities and have no tax liability whatsoever. Which he was very impressed with that strategy because I thought that was that was just great planning on your part. I mean, I think that's the big thing. It's like, okay, you have an advisor. He's charging you lots of hidden fees, but where's the financial advice? Yeah. So Aaron, as I, as I look through your analysis, I see that you're able to substantially reduce the overall management fees by eliminating some of these hidden costs. And then by taking that cash and getting invested in a high quality municipal bond portfolio, increase the income by over $30,000 a year. That's a substantial increase. Yeah, Bob, it's really incredible. With the percentage that we can we can increase the income, I mean, if you take that money compounded over the next 20 years, you're talking about almost a million dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, nothing and that's not taking more risk. That's taking less risk and having you know more consistent income. So it's not a matter of if that portfolio will grow. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, great job on this, Aaron. And that, that's really comes down to, right? I mean, it's that holistic approach, looking at everything. If you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the type of review I need. I need to know the fees I'm paying. I want to know, can I increase the income on my portfolio? What tax strategies can I benefit from? Here's your shot to do it. We still have a few slots left. If you call us right now or text, we're going to run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this, where we look at the whole picture. Simply just bring those statements in, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, however you want to do it. When you bring it to the office, we're going to load everything into a personalized financial portal for you so we can take a holistic bird's eye view of everything. And just like this portfolio, we're going to look at all those critical components. Can you increase the income on your portfolio? Were you able to increase the income on this portfolio and compound it out? That could be another million dollars in retirement. We're talking about real money here. We can look at the fees. This portfolio, there are a lot of hidden costs and annuities, brokerage products, and mutual funds. We were able to reduce the cost by 50%. How can we help you reduce costs on your portfolio? And we're going to look at diversification. Markets have been extremely volatile here. Is your portfolio protected? Are you ready for the next time the market has a big correction? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, take the pain challenge. Put your plan to the test by texting or call 844-752-6692. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a few slots left. You've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Wow. Another great show. Aaron, having your debut on the radio, it was, uh, it was great to have you, man. Just to hear that deep, booming voice is, uh, <laughs> is just way more masculine than Bob and I. Actually, Bob and I are pretty deep-voiced as well, but I think you take the cake. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Great job, Aaron. Another total financial masterpiece by Pain Capital Management. Well done. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, this is Aaron's big wedding weekend. So not only are you doing Pain No Gain radio show, but Aaron is getting married. That's a man that can do a lot of things at once. Hey, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're sweating there. I can't tell. <laughs> well, have a great weekend. Have a great Aaron Dessen wedding weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.